Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. Our work can be seen on film, Broadway, and at Renaissance festivals around the country. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. In this episode, we're going to be focusing on Link, the hero of Hyrule, and his legendary Hylian shield. Ilya uses Sharpie and sketches out the pattern for the shield. He then moves on to the Beverly Shear to cut it out. Since Ilya freehand drew the shield, we decided that we better check it for symmetry. I make a quick paper pattern up and just check it along the fold line. So since we've got the sides right, I'm just going to take this off, going to go to the sander and deburr it just to take that sharp edge off the back so we can handle it without being cut. Using a shallow dishing plate, Ilio begins to form the shield. To give the shield the shape, I'm utilizing the hardy hole in the anvil and a dishing stake. The dishing stake is supported by the donut weight that protects the hardy hole from the damage. This is not necessarily the proper sheet working setup. However, for shields, that's the best that I've discovered. Since it's the beginning of the process, the shield is warped to one side, and that happens because I'm right-handed, and, and the material wants to slightly go counterclockwise. Twice. Ilya decided it needed some more form, so he heats up the shield and forms it over a stake with a hammer. The dishing process was simply not giving me enough depth for the shield that I needed. I realized I needed to utilize a technique called hot raising, in which one bends the hot metal around a raising stake in order to achieve the curvature. It's getting rigid, and from now on it's going to get even more rigid as I proceed. The hot work is complete. As you can see, it's extremely rough. And from here on, I have to go and move to the anvil and do some extremely rough planishing. The flat surface of the anvil serves as my guide to beat these raised spots flat. At this stage, I'm going to use what is called an English wheel to complete my planishing process. This particular one came from the MG factory in England. However, the use of the English wheel dates back to the 17th century. What the English wheel does, it planishes out any bumps I have and pushes them back into the material, producing a nice, even surface. Lauren cuts and grinds the amber on a wet lapidary. We've decided to use real amber because it's got a sheen to it that shows up really nice on camera. Once we get it polished, it has an iridescence that almost glows. Now that we've finished cutting, we're going to take it and polish it. We use a yellow rouge, which is good for soft stones and plastic. Using silver bezel wire to create the shape, Warren forms the piece and solders it down on a copper back plate. Lauren sets the amber in the silver bezels. You have to be very careful as the amber is quite soft. For Link's shield, I have to draw the outside border. So here's the dimensions that he gave me to work from. That's the base of our shield. In order for John to be able to cut them on the plasma cutter, I have to break them apart into two different pieces. Using the plasma cutter, we cut out the outer border of the Highland shield. In the game, it shows big, thick borders. So what we did is we cut these pieces out of the same material we'd make a sword blade out of. After cutting, it's now time to deburr the overlays. I now add my steep bevels to the inside to give it that really thick in-game look. It's time to form the overlay over the shield. The best way to do that is to heat up the overlay till they're red hot, almost melting, and slowly creep up the edges of the shield using a set of clamps and tongs so that the pieces fit tightly together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the surface of the metal according to this pattern and create this sharp ridge. Now that the pattern is traced to the back of the shield, it's time to emboss it. Here, Ilya is using the Famco kick press to do the outside embossing. He's tracing his outside lines to capture the design. Sam holds the shield for Ilya as he finishes the repose embossing on the inside of the shield. 
Using a screw press and a chisel, Ilya lays in the design on the top of the shield. Using the MIG welder, Ilya attaches the outside border to the base of the shield. After attaching the outside border, he goes to the grinder and removes the excess weld. Ilya uses the drill press to lay in our central holes for our rivets. He then moves on to the welder and welds the rivets permanently into place. We weld in braces on the inside of the shield to prevent it from warping during the quench. Ilya lowers the shield into the furnace and waits for it to heat up. I thought it would be a great tie-in for the shield to build the original Master Sword. John uses the plasma cutter to cut out the blank for the guard so I can begin sculpting it on the sander. In a previous episode, you guys saw Tony make a longsword version of the Master Sword. I noticed in the comments that a lot of you requested to see the original Master Sword, which is a one-handed sword. It's also red and gold. Instead of doing it in wax and casting it, I thought it would be cool to show it being ground out of a solid block, so this is a big old block of steel. I remove my blade from the heat and forge the bevels. I then go back to the forge and move to the power hammer and draw out my tang. Now that the blade is hardened, I move to the grinders and begin sculpting the blade. So what we did is we lined a barrel with KO wool to make a big enough heat treat furnace to heat treat this shield. We're gonna take a big risk and heat treat this into water. We're gonna quench the shield. The shield is going to get very hard up on the quench after which we're going to temper. This is a crucial step to producing armor that can withstand combat. Once it reaches temperature, he removes it from the furnace and quenches it in water. From here on, it's only cleaning, a little bit of straightening, and we're good. Observing the color changes from the front, I guide Ilya as he heats the shield from behind. We're looking for that straw, maybe slightly into the plum color. Ilya did an amazing job on the embossing, the fitting. I mean, this is a real pain in the butt. He made it look easy. I'm just blown away by this shield. I love it. All I got to do now is clean up the border. On the 220 machine, I begin sanding on the outside rim. I then move on to the soft wheel machine to brighten up the embossing. To protect the gemstones on the shield, we CNC plasma cut out a surround. This will be riveted on the face. I have to file the steel so that I can fit the gemstone section into the center. Ilya grinds in some dimension on the center bezel that will be holding our amber stones. Ilya hand paints on the red design over the blue base coat and then lays the Triforce into place. I've seen a lot of different replicas of this shield made. Most of them look like plastic toys. I think we've gone above and beyond all that and made a shield that looks like it really would have been used in the medieval times. Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.